Hi guys, my name is Drinks On Me and I am here with Badger and we're here to talk about his Night Base EP, which is coming up very shortly. So, I've already said your name's Badger, but can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Yes, yes. Um, so I'm Badger, I'm a 23-year-old music producer, DJ and multi-instrumentalist from Bristol in the UK. I thought you were going to say multi-millionaire there. <laughs> I'm multi-millionaire. <laughs> Not yet. Give, give me a few years, I'm working on it. That's how I got onto Night Base. <laughs> um, so how did you get into music? Like, can you tell us sort of about... You're, you're starting out with music and how you really got into it. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I would definitely say that I got into music um, from my dad. Um, sort of as early as I can remember, he'd be playing music first thing in the morning, last thing at night, just running CDs and vinyls downstairs in the living room. Um, so I think definitely through that, just from constantly he like hearing music, mm. definitely made me very quickly as obsessed with it as he was. What kind of music was he? A massive mixture of stuff, really. I mean, you name it, he would have given it a go. There wasn't really a genre that he didn't didn't like or didn't listen to. Yeah. Do you reckon that sort of like influenced your sound? Because your sound's quite a lot of different sounds all mixed into one. I guess maybe in terms of me wanting to make my productions quite eclectic in, in terms of my like samples and stuff like that. Maybe. Never actually really thought yeah. of it like that though. But yeah, you might be right. Well, yeah, because there's like a lot of sort of like rocky more hard stuff and mm. then there's like garage and then you dip into like bits of drum and bass and whatever like what would you say your favorite genre is to really like produce well so my my main and favorite genre is definitely uk garage but i mean i've been told that it's a bit more on the experimental sort yeah. of different out there side i mean i don't really feel like it is um but a lot of people listen to it and they say oh this is really different so i mean i definitely take that as a compliment but yeah, yeah. I, I would say so because like your sound is just unlike anything that i had ever heard when i started listening to your stuff like villain and stuff like that and i've definitely described your sound as experimental because it's just so different and like that's sort of what makes this EP really good as well. Thanks, man. Um, Appreciate that. What made you want to start creating music? I know you say that your dad got you into music, but when you actually sort of picked up, what is it mm. that you're on? FL Ableton. Um, so I started on Logic. Well, I, I do produce on Logic, but in terms of like me actually wanting, going from just really enjoying listening to music through going to creating it, I think just like I very quickly realised that like if listening to it made me ecstatic, then like actually creating my own music was going to be like indescribably sick. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think very quickly from like hearing my dad play music, picking up instruments in the house. I mean, so my dad has like has played quite a few different instruments as well. None, none of which he's really stuck out for a very long time. <laughs> but I mean, he's had lessons and played like loads of different instruments for sort of anywhere between like a month to a year. Yeah. So loads of instruments around the house. So I think I just like listened to the music he was listening to for a little bit. Very quickly was like picking up guitars, trying to like bash them about, like yeah, play yeah. notes and stuff, like make my own little melodies and, and, and chords and stuff like that. So yeah, I think, I think yeah. that's the origin. I was going to ask you, do you play like your own instruments or have you got any yeah. sort of like or proper analog like instruments in your So in music? terms of like hardware instruments, no. Um, but like I try and incorporate like sort of real instruments into my production as much as possible. Um, so I play guitar, play a little bit of bass, I can play drums, um, and I can sing to a half decent standard as well, with a bit of production on it, I, I can make it sound listenable. Um, so yeah, I try and sort of get, get that sort of real sound into my electronic productions as much as possible, really. And if someone came up to you in a pub and was like, how would you describe your music? How would you describe it best to someone? I'm sure you've had to do it before. Mm. See, that's quite a tough one as well, and I think it, think it changes, and because like, obviously I don't, just make one thing but I mean go into my sort of main drummer I'd say it's obviously UK Garage but sort of some if you sort of mixed indie music with bass music mainly sort of two-step stuff so not the classic like boom 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 like kick drum on every beat um, but sort of yeah sort of like indie bass music I think would best describe what I'm making. Indie bass. That's indie what we're going to have to tag it on, on SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag indie bass. Hashtag indie bass. Hashtag badger. Yeah, <laughs> man. Works for me. Um, so with this EP, I want to talk a little bit more about it because obviously that's what we're sort of talking about. Um, what was the creative process with it? Like, how did you sort of make it from start to finish? When were these tracks sort of made? Was there a long time between them? Um, sort of, can you describe the creative yeah, yeah. process of it? So these tracks were both sort of created um, a little while um, sort of quite a while apart from each other. Um, I think Ponder Track came first, which is one of one of the earliest tunes that I like really sent to you like a yeah. long time ago, and you said you like really liked that one. Yeah. I think that's sort of how we got chatting a lot more. Uh, and then somebody came um, not that long ago, a few months ago, sort of finished somebody um, had been chatting to to AC Slater on email for a little while at that point. Um, sent him that, and he just absolutely loved that one. He said this would be great to sort of lead an EP with. Um, let's sort of have a think about what else you've got, send me all, all your other unreleased bits. Yeah. Then he sort of heard Ponder Track, we chatted about that and it sort of became clear that they really should live together on a release. So it sort of happened. Well that's like, 
these tracks may have been produced like quite a while ago, but when people hear them, they're gonna hear it as something like very fresh. I don't yeah, think there's yeah. anything like this out there to sort of listen to, oh, um, which was what sort of like really impressed me about your music when you first sent it through. Um, what was your sort of like inspiration behind the tracks that you made if you had to sort of like say? Hmm, the inspiration, I guess just like garage in general, um, and then but I think especially with um, with somebody it's sort of like quintessential badger in terms of that like indie mix with the bass music like I was saying. Yeah, yeah. So it's sort of those like euphoric, like emotional melodies then combined with sort of like gritty, sort of like overly distorted sort of bass lines and sound designs. And then obviously like a two-step beat as well, which is sort of my like main go-to for sort of like drum yeah. arrangement. Um, I can't remember exactly what your question was. <laughs> <laughs> I can't either, so yeah. no way back. But yeah, there's an answer. <laughs> um, if you had to pick a favourite out of them, what would it be? I think I'd have to go somebody, just because it's the newest um, and it's the one that sort of is most me, I guess. Yeah. And then Ponder Track, I think, just sort of leads really well. So it's a much more sort of heavy, dance floor orientated one, like 808 filled sort yeah, of stomper. Yeah. Which one took you longer to produce? Do you remember? They were both quick ones, actually. Both really? sort of within a few days, Mad. start to finish. Yeah, um, I think both of them actually maybe maybe why they work together quite well because they both they both came even though they were made at sort of different times, sort of maybe half a year apart. They both made in phases where I was having like a massive creative burst. Yeah, yeah. It sort of was like I just knew I'd be at work and I knew I needed to go home, sit down and spend a few hours on music, and then it sort of be that evening. It's like. The, the main structure has been done and then a couple of yeah. days of like of like polishing it. So do you find it harder to get ideas laid down or do you find it harder to finish tracks? Like finishing. Finishing is always the longest yeah. bit. It's that last little 10% or 1% um, where you just get ridiculously obsessive about things. Like is this hi-hat a tiny bit too loud? Yeah, yeah, tiny little things can take hours or days of you sort of yeah. doing that. It's all that tweaking in it. That yeah, takes yeah. ages. Like actually laying down the ideas is yeah. not really the, the difficult part, I suppose. And that's do you definitely the funnest bit. Yeah, 100%. Do you find that there's there's things in general like, is there a trend between when you're really creative, is there stuff that's going on in your life? Like, do you find inspiration in certain things or does it just come randomly? Mm, I guess like, yeah, in times when I'm when I'm out and about more than others, I think so obviously Bristol is quite unique um, in terms of places in the UK right now because it's got loads of sort of sit down events going on. Mm. So I've still managed to sort of get out even though it's like sat down uh, at a table of six, but like <clears throat> still like in front of a big sound system, listening to music, like the sort of music that I'm like trying to make. So I think um, that's always been a big source of inspiration. So I'm pretty lucky to have that yeah. in terms of where I'm at at the moment. Are you looking forward to, to gigs getting back properly? Because <coughs> obviously we're still... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not long, um, end of June, isn't it? So um, yeah. yeah, last sort of month, month and a bit push. Are you looking more forward to getting back to garage events or drama bass events? <laughs> Oh, I mean, <laughs> drum and bass events are pretty fun, I've got to give you that, but um, I think Garage in terms of like inspiration and just like being a part of the scene and sort of seeing some familiar faces again that maybe haven't been around as much, I think that's definitely going to be a really nice thing to sort of get back to. Yeah, 100%, like especially after after these like night bass releases, people are going to sort of like be recognising you and you're going to have like that sort of stuff to talk about with people, it's going to be, it's going to be yeah, really good. Can't um, wait. With, with sort of gigs and festivals that we're talking about, uh, what would be your dream gig as a DJ? Hmm. If you could pick one to do. That's a tough one. Like. I don't know, maybe Coachella or something like that. Coachella. I think just any like any large like large crowded event like in the US would be a dream come true for me to sort of like yeah. be on the lineup for. Yeah, so uh, hopefully with a bit of time, a few more releases Shout could out. happen. Co Coachella, if you're watching. <laughs> Coachella, if you're watching. <laughs> Book me, man. Yeah, yeah. Hook him up. Yeah, have you played? Have you played gigs before? Before all of like lockdown happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I spent spent the last couple of years sort of playing in and around Bristol, being on the sort of nightclub circuit there. Um, really good scene in Bristol for sort of underground stuff and dance music. Like it's an absolutely thriving community. So yeah, sort of been a part of that since I moved to Bristol um, coming up to five years ago, and then just sort of got straight into networking there. Sort of started yeah. getting shows quite quickly around there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to getting get back to all of that like in a, in a more normal way. For sure. do, you, do you find that you prefer like smaller, more intimate gigs, or do you prefer like big room, like a bigger room, if, even if you haven't played with them, like um, in your head? I think they both have their good qualities, definitely. Um, 
I think, yeah, the intimate ones are great because it's just sort of like tiny, like get in there in like a dark, sweaty room. Yeah. Sort of just play out those dark tunes and just really, it's really intimate as well. I think everybody there really feels a sense of community and they all feel like they're part of something. Yeah. But then I guess, and that's, so that's great for the audience and for the artist. So then maybe it's only, it's only a really good thing for the artist on the bigger shows because you have that yeah. sort of sense of achievement and that's like such an exciting thing in your like I guess if all those people are there to hear your music that's like an amazing thing yeah. but I guess in the audience that sort of the sort of emotion of it might get a little bit lost yeah I'm, I mean I, I find that like at smaller gigs you'll get more of a community thing like you say because like obviously not a lot of people have heard about them for it to have been a small thing so I guess you get a lot of people in one space who are like really into the same thing and have that same sort of niche like interest. I yeah, guess. yeah. So I guess that that brings a sort of appeal because everyone's there properly to see you. Whereas I guess at like a bigger bigger event that might get lost on some True. people. True. Yeah, yeah. It's on hose. Agreed. Um, so you're not a stranger to Night Base. You've obviously already been on um, the freshman EP with with Give It To Me. How did you find that people received that track? Did you get a lot of love on it? Yeah, I mean, so far so good, absolutely on that one. Um, absolute pleasure to sort of get it out. Um, first thing taken by the Night Base guys. Um, yeah, people seem to really like it so far. Um, yeah, I think I sort of take pride in it being like, so I think it's the only sort of two, two step garage track on the out of the sort of EP. Um, so I definitely yeah. take pride in, in, in that as well, for sure. But um, no, it's been really good so far. Can't wait to uh, get more stuff out. Yeah, I mean, AC's been pushing like, the, the garage sound a lot on night bass and it's sort of branching out I mm -hmm. guess which would be really good for your EP are you sort of excited to bring that garage to the US and and sort of show them what yeah, we're man. doing here absolutely yeah yeah can't wait definitely and um, got to gotta give love to AC for sort of uh, believing in the stuff and, and wanting to put out the stuff that's a slightly different sound for sure yeah 100% yeah, so a lot of people will probably be interested to know how your EP is obviously coming on to night bass how did it sort of get discovered and, and like what was the process from start to finish from producing the tracks to getting them in, like on Nightbase? So I think in terms of the, the sort of myself and Nightbase relationship starting, we'd have to bring you into the, into the conversation if that's the case. Um, so I think it's um, obviously you and me sort of got chatting, whatever it was, sort of eight or ten months ago. Um, I yeah. sort of sent you a little playlist of tunes and I said, um, you don't know me, but I know you. I've seen you're doing bits like um, here's a few tunes, like feel free to like DJ them or just listen or that kind of thing um, and you said yeah I really like like quite a lot of these uh, got a few people sort of want to try and get you in contact with um, and one of them being obviously AC Slater my base boss um, yeah so then me and AC sort of just got chatting for a little while over email um, and then after chatting for a little while we sort of said like okay let's try and get some stuff locked in first track of that of those releases being give it to me and then obviously Next thing, next thing coming up to CP, which I'm really excited for. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I sort of knew that AC would really love this sort of music because he's trying to push the boundaries of night bass and, and branch out into more of the UK sound, I guess, like definitely over the last year, over lockdown. It's definitely happened, like it's on the sort of up. So from my end, I definitely knew that he would like this. The fact that he got signed to night bass was that a shock to you? Yeah. I think I, I was quite surprised initially because um, obviously my stuff being sort of mainly two-step garage, um, I just thought in my head either it wasn't, uh, people were going to think it wasn't quite good enough or it was a little bit too different or that kind of thing. But um, no, thankfully not. AC was totally down for it and sort of what you thought was, was fairly spot on. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was an amazing feeling, man, sort of starting to make those initial contacts, going from sort of no signings or some very small stuff to sort of more like dream, dream like yeah, signings. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, really good feeling and the journey's been great so far and I've got to obviously big you up for sort of listening to my tunes and believing in me, man. Like, yeah, Absolutely. can't thank you enough. But just just for some context, how many tracks, because I think I know the answer to this, but how many tracks did you send off to AC and how many did he actually snap up? <laughs> oh, I don't know. If you know the answer, then please. I feel like please the tell. playlist, I feel like you send him a playlist of like quite a lot of Yeah, lot yeah, of yeah, ideas. probably was anywhere between 14 and yeah. 22 I think on a playlist nice. yeah 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 so it's crazy <laughs> so yeah like it is sort of like very like the quality has to stay high I guess on, on a label yeah definitely maybe nice that thing. was a bit too much thinking about it <laughs> I think no I think what we did first you said let's like let send me a playlist of sort of 
what we think is the best or the most fitting three or four. Yeah. And then we sort of went from there and he said, yeah, like what I hear there, anything else? And I was like, well, yeah, here's this absolute truckload of tunes. Like, <laughs> have a listen and see what you think. Animal. Yeah, yeah, so I don't know, from there, yeah, maybe sort of like three or four, but he's, yeah, yeah he really liked, um, yeah. Yeah, well, mate, fair play to you. Like, it's fully deserved, like, everything that you've got with Night Base is obviously, like, all for your own merit and the sound is ridiculous, so. Sound, man. Um, yeah, Badger's, Badger's EP coming up on Night Base. Better check it out. Um, yeah. Any more to say for me? Cool. Um, in terms of, uh, the, nah, I think, I think we're all good to be honest. plug any socials. Come Covered on. most things. Use this. Use oh, this. yeah, so uh, Instagram, uh, Badger underscore music underscore maker. Um, Facebook, just... Sure, uh, Badger Music Art, Badger Music Artist on Facebook. Ah, Facebook. Uh, I mean, Facebook isn't that important. And then I think the, the SoundCloud is uh, Badger Music Artist as well. I think. I'm not really sure. The Insta, the Insta's the main one, definitely. Just, just um, get out of Spotify. And then get out of Spotify, yeah, and just go for Badger, and it'll be the one with the yellow logo. And that's how you know. Stream it like a madness. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Get on that. Lovely stuff. Good, good chat to you, Badger. Yeah, thank you for, thank you for having me. Appreciate Sound. it.